Hmm. That's a pretty nice iPod Nano there. Wonder what would happen if I, uh, took... Oh, what the heck? So, you're probably wondering what this is. And that's good, because I'm going to show you how to build this today. This is a Arduino hooked up to a PIR sensor. And what a PIR sensor does is it senses heat. So if there's a person or an animal that walks by the PIR sensor, it will set it off. It will this PIR sensor from Parallax will output a high or a, output a five volt signal whenever it detects motion. And then that's set up to trigger the Arduino, turning on this light and this buzzer that you see here. So now, I'll show you how the parts all go together on this thing, so that you could build one yourself. I'll also show you the code, and explain how it works. If this focuses. There. So there's a PIR sensor, and I guess I'll start with this LED, because that's easy enough to get out of the way. It's just hooked to pin 13 and ground, because 13 on the Arduino has a built-in resistor. Then the PIR sensor um, has three pins, ground, 5 volt, and signal. Ground and 5 volt are hooked up to their respective rails, and then the signal pin is hooked up to pin 2, digital pin 2. Then the buzzer is activated by a 3904 transistor. Any NPN transistor would work fine. The base of the NPN transistor is hooked through a 100 ohm resistor to pin 1 on the Arduino. And then, yeah, that's about it. It's pretty simple. Using the uh, transistor, you can switch anything up to about 600 milliamps, I believe. Which is more than enough for uh, what I trigger with this. And then this is just a simple buzzer that I got from James Co. I just threw that on here to deter thieves. But that's only one use for this thing. Now let me show you some more. Another use for the PIR sensor is you can trigger a power switch tail like I have here and have it turn on something that requires 120 volts AC. In this case, a lamp, but you could use it to turn on anything. I also thought of a prank that if you alter the code a little bit, you could set this up by like your doorway or something to your room, and you could be playing like Xbox or something, and then when someone comes into your room, or you could call them into your room, like, hey, come over here, you should see this. You could, then that when they would walk in, it would turn off your Xbox or TV or something, and then you could be like, hey, you broke it. So that's kind of a cool prank idea that you could try with this if you felt like it. But it's also useful, like, you could set this up, if someone comes into a room, you could have it turn on a light bulb for 20 minutes, and then if it doesn't detect any motion after that, it will turn it off. Stuff like that can be very useful. You could use this to turn on and off your power strip. Say, uh, I hook all my electronic stuff up to two power strips, and to one power strip is my, all my soldering equipment is hooked up, and, uh, that would be a good thing to automatically turn off after a while so it doesn't burn down the house or something. So that's just another use for this. But overall, it's a pretty useful circuit if you combine it with a power switch tail. I built my own one, and if you click the video link in the description below, you will see how to build your own and save about 20 bucks. So as you can see in my code here, the constant integers are integers that are not going to change as the code runs. Um, those are the PIR state, the LED pin, and the output pin. PIR pin being pin, digital pin 2, LED pin being 13 because of the built-in resistor, and output pin being 1, the output pin triggers the transistor, which can turn on the buzzer or the power switch tail. Now, in the void setup, I set all the pins at the as either inputs or outputs. The PIR pin is the only input we have, so we set that as so. Then LED pin and the output pin are set as outputs. 
We also do a delay for 15 seconds here, but I would recommend 20 or to 30 seconds, which would help it stabilize a little bit more and uh, prevent it from triggering right when the circuit begins to actually run. When the code begins to run, I mean. Um, in the void loop, we make a new integer called PIR state. And what the PIR state is, is it reads the PIR pin, which basically means if it... And then we go to the if statement where if the PIR state reads a high signal, meaning motion is detected, it will set the LED pin high, meaning it turns the LED on. It also writes the output pin high, which triggers the transistor turning on the buzzer or the power switch tail. And if something else happens, meaning the PIR state is low, it sets the LED pin as low, turning it off and it writes the output pin as low as well. Now if you wanted to do that prank that I mentioned where it would turn off if someone entered the room, you would make the output pin for the first if statement, you would make that low, and for the else if, you would make the output pin high. That would be the only change you have to make for that to work. So there you go, that is the code for the PIR switch. Basically what happens when you apply power, the PIR stays, it, um, the PIR doesn't do anything for 15 to 20 seconds. That gives it some time to settle down and get a good reading on the room, because it has to calibrate. Um, for some reason when I plug mine in, it turns everything on for like 2 or 3 seconds and then su such, uh, shuts it off for 15 seconds or so. But, um, yeah, it's a good idea to do that, to let the PIR settle down, see how, how the PIR is red. That means it's detecting motion, but also when it's calibrating, it does that. So, once you, you wait for 15 seconds or so, I have mine set up for 15 seconds, 20 or 25 would work even better. But, it should turn off any second now. But after the 15 to 20 seconds, it starts accepting the signals from the PIR and using it to do stuff. So it's it's pretty simple code. Um, it's basically just two if statements. So all in all, this is a pretty simple circuit that is easy enough to set up and is very useful for multiple things. You can use this as an alarm system. You could use it for pranks. You could use it for other practical reasons, such as turning off your soldering iron when you leave the room. So I highly recommend building this circuit and writing the program. Very simple and fun to mess around with. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe for more videos in the future.